Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Macaulay's special event for parents of newly accepted students. My name is Stephanie Strathy, and I am the Director of Individual Giving here at the college, where I also serve as parent liaison. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We have designed an evening just for you so that you can hear from Macaulay families about why they and their students decided that our honors program was the right choice for them. We know that you and your students need to make your own college decision by May 1st, and we hope you will choose Macaulay. To give you a broad understanding of our honors college community, we have put together a diverse panel of current and alumni parents who will share personal stories of their own Macaulay experiences. Later on during the Q&A, we will invite you to ask questions about classes, culture, community, or anything else. We want you and your students to have all of the information you need to make an important choice that will impact the next four years and beyond. And now I would like to invite our panelists to join me on screen. Okay. Uh, our order of speakers this evening will be Michael Arena, parent of Michaela in the class of 2020, Ruth Noemi Colon, parent of Gerson in the class of 2019, Jack Aney, parent of Elion in the class of 2019, and David in the new entering class, the class of 2025, Allison France, parent of Checo in the class of 2023, Lorraine Chun Eng, parent of Claire in the class of 2021, and Steve Borello, parent of Joe in the class of 2014, Stevie in the class of 2016, and Michael in the class of 2019. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Michael Arena, please start us off and tell us a little bit about your family's experience at the college. Hey, uh, can everybody hear me? Am I okay? That very, can, hopefully you can all hear me. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's really, really special for me to be here, uh, to have the opportunity to talk to all of the parents and the students who are considering coming to uh, Macaulay. I just want to uh, say that we have a great lineup of people and you'll be hearing all kinds of things. I do want to congratulate you for your, uh, your success in being here. We know you have options and, um, and that's why you're here to find out more about this option. Um, and uh, I can tell you, it's not an easy uh, choice. My, my daughter, uh, we spent uh, our year traveling quite a bit. I know that that's not the case with COVID, but uh, she was uh, admitted to Georgetown and uh, Gettysburg and, um, and Geneseo, which is a, a really big mix. Uh, and I thought we were stunk because um, she was raving about the chocolate chip cookies at Gettysburg. Uh, which were really fabulous. And I actually mentioned that to her the other day and she hadn't forgotten it. And she said, well, I made the best choice because uh, I got the best chocolate chip cookies because her mom made the cookies. And uh, she, didn't really, um, she didn't really travel that far to come, come home sometimes on weekends to pick up her, her cookies. And uh, so it was, it was a, a, surprising, a surprising answer. I, you know, I, I happen to be a, a City University uh, graduate from City College. And I can't tell you the joy and the pleasure that I had of my daughter attending and receiving the same excellent uh, education that I received, uh, I'm not gonna say how many years ago. Um, it was just a pleasure to watch her grow and to be, knowing that she was close by was also um, a, a big relief for us as parents. We were both working and doing things that would, were, um, were keeping us right, very busy, but we knew that we were more than a phone call away and, uh, and she was always welcome to come back, but, but she never did. But we, we, had, that, we had that great feeling. Um, a word about um, the program in my estimation, I have a background in higher education and, and currently on um, consulting and, and marketing in higher education. And I, I just wanna put, put it right out there. Uh, I may be biased, but I'm also convinced that this is the best program in the country. And I'll say that because there are many honors college programs. But, um, but the experience of leveraging the city uh, in, in ways that you're gonna hear about tonight, I won't go into that. Uh, although my daughter did have a number of things uh, tapping into the museums, employment and internships. But um, all of that combined with the, with the classroom experience. And one of the things I think that really separates uh, um, Macaulay is that it, it integrates the students into the actual college experience. So these kids are not 
uh, being coddled and they're not being uh, you're not being put into isolated communities like so many of these colleges, which basically um, excludes the kids from developing and working with uh, all kinds of students, classmates from all kinds of backgrounds. And this was something that I benefited from many years ago at City College. And I can tell you that there's no, there's no question um, that um, Michaela came back a different person because of her experience of being friends with, classmates with a diversity of people from across uh, the college that she attended, which happened to be Hunter College. And uh, so sometimes people don't realize that, but these students are contributing in very positive ways uh, and learning from their classmates in, in very positive ways that they may not uh, learn uh, going to another college, uh, you know, um, especially uh, colleges that are struggling for diversity, which we prize here in New York. Um, and I'll say one or two other things and then I'll pass it on. Uh, you know, a lot is being said today about social justice. Uh, and, I, and I'm sort of a, a little bit of a history buff about uh, City University. Uh, this is the original social justice university. It was founded uh, 175 years ago. And Macaulay is very much um, a part of that 175-year uh, tradition, although it's only, only been around for 15 or 20 years. Uh, but it was founded under the concept that, uh, that New York City wanted a place where the rich and poor could learn together. That was the actual words that were from the founder. And uh, I think Macaulay is no better example 175 years later of the uh, idea of a diverse group of people coming together and learning, uh, which is really what they wanted to do 175 years ago. So um, one, one thing I would say that was uh, special for Michaela, aside from the classroom experiences, the Opportunity Fund allowed her uh, you know, to plan out uh, two separate trips associated with her major, which was art history. So she went to Europe twice in the course of the four years and uh, really developed a, a, a hands-on um, situation by going into the field and working on in uh, both in a museum situation and then in a field situation, archeological situation. So uh, that, uh, that opportunity fund made that happen for her. Um, I'm gonna just step back now and happy to take your questions later, but uh, I want, I'm, I'm sure you wanna hear from everybody else and I'm sure we're ready to go to our next speaker now. Yeah, thanks, Michael. I just have one quick question for you. So what, what do you think when, when Michaela traveled, you know, abroad and, and, you know, by the Opportunities Fund, what do you think that she took away from that experience? Well, you know, she had to um, make adjustments in terms of independence. I mean, when you travel, of course, everything is kind of taken care of for you, uh, the flights and all, but you really are dealing with language barriers, you're dealing with cultural barriers, you're dealing with the, the true question of independence, and then you're on your own in order to develop and make it a kind of a program that, um, that you can benefit from from your, from your, uh, uh, from your studies. Um, so she came back with, we had traveled to Europe once or twice when she was very young, but the fact that she was able to do it on her own I think was a big, big step for her uh, in, in her maturation. Great, thank you so much. Of course, this was all pre-COVID when she went, but uh, hopefully you know, we'll, we'll be able to <laughs> get back to that sometime soon. Um, thanks, thanks so much, Michael. Um, our next I just want to say that she was on the last flight coming out of uh, Milan at the end of January of last year. And, oh, wow. uh, so, I mean, the following week, February, everything, I mean, we had heard things were going on, but nothing. So she's been, you know, she's been one ahead, one step ahead in that regard. We, we tease her about that, but I, that's just a little yeah. fun fact. Glad she had a great experience. Yeah. Okay. Um, so thanks very much. Our next speaker is Ruth Nomi Colon. Ruth? Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the parents of the class of 2025. I'm very happy to be here with you and talking about my experiences or my son's experiences with the program. Um, as Michael Arena said, my son, uh, my husband and I went to different colleges looking for programs. Uh, he was accepted to all the schools that he, was, he applied to. 
but put that aside. I just want to talk about the first time that I heard about the program, the Macaulay Honor Program, was a friend of mine has her son in the program. He was one of the students, and she was talking about how good the program was and how rigorous the acceptance process is. So one of the things that I thought, huh, if the program is that good or that rigorous, that means that they had to offer something good. So that was one of the first things that um, put my attention. And another thing was, the attention that the students got. Uh, I know they have like two advisors. One is in the school that they go to. In my case, it was Hunter College. My, my son um, selected Hunter College. The other one is they have an advisor at the Macaulay Honor Program. So between the, those two advisors, they gave them so much advice that they like followed them or it's not that they are on top of them, but they are available to help them. So. That was also that in my mind was kind of something that attracted my attention because I knew that he was going to have support and that he was going to have resources that he would not have in other schools. If you go to these huge uh, colleges or universities, you are one of many and you will get lost. I knew that Macaulay was a program that it was going to be uh, giving attention to the students. It's kind of individualized. So that's something that got, got my attention. As I mentioned before, we went to different schools and my, my son really wanted to go to Boston University and he was accepted at Boston University. So he applied to the school because another person approached him. I, I don't want to get into um, the name of the person, but it's someone that is kind of influential. So that person spoke to my son and said, you should apply, you will be good for it. Uh, even though we have mentioned it before, he didn't pay attention to me, but that's okay. He did apply. So when we got the letter that he was accepted to Macaulay, we sat down with him and he, we were like, you can go to Boston University, that is for you to go, or you can go to Macaulay where we know that you're gonna have you're gonna get an exceptional education. You're gonna be close to us. And also we can save all that money for your post-grad uh, studies because we knew he, that he wanted to do his doctorate degree in, in psychology. That was always the plan for him. So I think that was something that in his mind um, that helped knowing that we were gonna be able to help him later on financially if he went to Macaulay. He decided to accept uh, uh, Macaulay's invitation to, to go to the school and we were so happy and we are still very happy. He took advantage of, of the courses, the advisors. Um, something that Macaulay offers is these honor seminars where you can choose where, where what do you want to do. He went to the art in, in New York City and people. So he went to museums he went to opera. He really got engaged in the art part of the city, something that he never experienced before. Uh, so for him, it was something that opened his eyes and that he really appreciated. And he has now a new uh, appreciation for art in the city and people, something that also caught his attention. He went to a private school for high school that was more or less um, a lot of white people and, and same standard, but Something that he saw with Hunter College and Macaulay is that it's very diverse. And, and that's something that attracted to him and it, it was good for us to, not only in terms of race, but also in ages. So you have students, especially in Hunter College from young students from high school to college, also adults that are working and studying and different races, different uh, backgrounds. So it's something that he got the experience that he would not have in another place. It's just talking to adults that are already working and have the experience of workplace or life experiences, also having people to his same age. But at the same time, in Macaulay, they were more academic and more uh, emphasis in that area. So it gave him that uh, foundation for the next steps when he went uh, on for his postgrad. Actually, I was just saying before, to some people that he finished his master's degree today and Friday is his graduation for a master's degree at Columbia University. 
and he's starting his uh, PhD for clinical psychology in, in September. And I'm sure, and I'm, I'm really sure that Macaulay has a lot to do with it. All that foundation, all that, uh, not only in academic, but also the personality, giving them um, the confidence that it's something that they can do. He took advantage of the abroad program. He went to Amsterdam and not only he studied at Amsterdam, it's something that goes to what Michael was saying before. He took advantage that he was already in Europe and he went to different countries. He went to Germany, he went to France, he went to London, he went to Spain. And he did that all by himself. And we have gone to Europe before as a family, but this was him on himself checking uh, trains or planes, looking for hotels. He always checked with me, like, do you think that this is good? But he did everything on his own and took advantage of being already in Europe. So he learned even more about art. He went to more museums. He, he took advantage of everything that was there for him. And all this is came for free. Like, as a parent, you don't have to pay for all this because uh, Macaulay have the uh, opportunities fund that you can use for this. So it's an education that goes beyond the, the walls of the university. It's go beyond that. It goes all the way to the whole world. So as a student, they have a great opportunity here, not only to learn in terms of academics, but also to grow as a person, as a human being, and learn a lot about what everything that is there out there to offer to us. I know we mentioned COVID. Hopefully, by next year, this will be in the past and the student can start traveling again because it's really a great experience that I really um, support or uh, uh, advise for people to take advantage of. Um, it's so many things that we can say, but I know that I have more people, more parents that are gonna talk. We're gonna have a Q&A uh, later. So I'm open to answer more questions that you have, but take advantage of the opportunity that the city gave you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruth. That's great. I'm so glad that Gerson really took advantage of everything that Macaulay had to offer him and that he traveled really the world and through the opportunities funds. Um, it's something that we really try to make possible for our students to have such a wealth of experiences, not only in the classroom, but out the, outside the classroom. So thank you. Something, I, one more thing. I don't know if they still do it, but when my son uh, went to Macaulay, they were also offered the laptop. I don't know if that's yes. what that's we still do. do, yes, we still provide so something because we were going to buy an laptop for him anyways when he went to college, so we didn't have to do it. And, and something that really helped. Uh, right. Nowadays, you need a laptop to do your study, especially with COVID. Wonderful. Yeah, it's so true. So true. So thank you, Ruth. Okay, our next speaker is Jack Amy. And interesting thing about Jack is that he has a, a son who's a new member of the class of 2025, as well as having his daughter, Eliane, who graduated a few years ago. So Jack, take it away. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, my daughter, Eliane, is a graduate of Macaulay. Uh, she loved it. Uh, when uh, We were very excited when she got admitted to Macaulay. Uh, one, for, as parents, we wanted uh, something that was close to home, but also that offered a world-class education. And uh, Macaulay, with its various campuses that you can go to, uh, offered that. It was an honors college that gave you that flexibility of where, where you study at. Uh, so it was great. We were very happy with the level of education that it provided Elian. Uh, we love that it's recognized as an honors program uh, with, throughout you know, many different other organizations, other colleges, employers in the future, and so forth. It worked out very well for her. Uh, we loved, um, I'll say, M Michael said something that resonated well with me. Uh, we love that it was part of a larger school. Uh, so it's not just that she's attending an honors college, she's attending college like everybody else. And yet that designation of being an, a, Macaulay, uh, a Macaulay honoree within that college gave a, a special type of significance to that, a little, um, you know, a little boost and it kind of builds their confidence and they perform better in order to meet the expectation that's, uh, you know, that's, that's really uh, put on them. Uh, so on the one hand, they get into the college because they're, they're performing well, but they also maintain it because that's what's expected as a Macaulay student. So it worked really, really nicely for her. Um, 
through her first year, Eliane loved the school. Uh, she she got great uh, through the administration and staff, unbelievable administration and staff. She got great career guidance and advice as she was struggling to figure out what she wanted to do in her life. Uh, she got access to seminars that Macaulay offers like Arts in New York City and People of New York City, which basically uh, allowed her to go around with her class uh, throughout New York City uh, understand its culture and really get great perspective on everything going on in the city in so many different ways. Uh, she also participated in the Opportunities Fund where she went to Italy. Uh, she loved that, no, no need to, to explain why. Uh, <laughs> Capstone Project, uh, she, she loved that. That's a, a project where uh, she had to prepare a thesis on anything she wanted. Uh, she, she did something that uh, touched on music, which is something that she was interested in. Uh, and she she loved it. It, it was a, a an opportunity for her to connect school with her life, and uh, and Macaulay really did that great for her. Uh, now Eliane is finishing up her first year at law school. She got into Cardozo Law School with almost a full scholarship, uh, thanks to her Macaulay education, I should add. Uh, and uh, she's doing very well there. And, and an interesting thing is that uh, she just last week she was learning about eminent domain which is a concept in law where the government can take away private property for the public good and uh, it was a concept that was really new to a lot of students uh, but not to Alian because through her Macaulay training and her uh, you know her visits throughout New York understanding the culture of the city and how the city was built and Robert Moses and all of that she actually had great perspective on why the city was able to do that, what it was able to do, the drawbacks of what it was able to do. And she, she got that great perspective from her Macaulay class and she added a lot to her current law class. So uh, she, she was impressed with what she actually learned. She'd never thought she'd need it, but she did. Uh, so she's very excited. I, uh, she loved the school, we love the school and uh, the proof is in the pudding. We're sending our, uh, our son David there next year. Uh, without hesitation, we're very excited for him. He's excited, she's excited. So it's a, it's a family school, and uh, we hope that all of you join us as well. Thanks, Jack. So what, what do you think made David decide to pick Macaulay over all the other places he could have gone? Uh, Dave, David was very excited about all the opportunities Elian had. Uh, we speak about it uh, almost every week at the table. Uh, we talk we talked to Eliane about her experiences in class and you know how it is working within or studying within the Macaulay structure within the college and getting all the opportunities she had the laptop the opportunities from the traveling the culture in New York it's very different from a regular school in that you're getting that high class education but you're also you're you're living as a person you're understanding the world that you live in at the same time uh, he was excited to attend Macaulay for the last four years so uh, it, it wasn't a big decision for him. Great. Thanks so much, Jack. We're happy to welcome him as a new member of the class of 2025. Um, our next speaker is uh, Allison France, whose daughter Checo is a member of the class of 2023. Allison. Um, first, I have to say congratulations to all the parents. I can remember how Checo and I felt when we got the letter. It really was like winning the lottery. We were just numb for, you know, several hours after that. She had applied to 13 colleges and um, most of them were pretty challenging places. Um, Trinity, Connecticut College, Bryn Mawr, Spelman. Um, and we had been traveling a lot. We, I think we went to maybe seven or eight of them. Um, but when we got the email from Macaulay, it was pretty clear where she was gonna go. I tried to stay in the background and not influence her one way or the other. Um, but I was also asked where I first heard about Macaulay. And I think I heard about it through researching CUNY in general. A couple of years ago, the um, CUNY system ran an advertising campaign on subways that highlighted some of the students and the teachers there. And they were, these were like mini profiles. And I can remember reading them and thinking, boy, these people are fabulous. You know, um, there were a lot of um, students involved in research. Um, they were doing all of these fantastic projects. They were traveling uh, for grad school. They were going to, you know, Harvard, Yale, Princeton. Um, 
they were winning all of these awards, you know, Truman Awards, Marshall, uh, MacArthur Genius Grants, um, Rhodes Scholar. And so I went online just to find out more about these students. And I think that's when I stumbled on Macaulay. Um, Macaulay was not on the radar of many people back then. This was well before Cheka was ready to apply to colleges. So this has got to be four or five years ago. Um, not too many people had heard about Macaulay. Um, and then when it came time for Cheka to apply to colleges, her guidance counselor had never heard of it. I think in part that was because Cheka was in school in Massachusetts. Um, so I, I cut the guidance counselor a little slack for that. Now I, I should point out the school, which was a boarding school for girls, is very much interested in Macaulay um, and has certainly put it in the um, roster for current students. So that's how we found out about Macaulay. And um, I think what we were looking for, or I should say what Cheka was looking for in a school was um, a place that offered smaller classes, but was in a larger environment, a university setting so that she had a lot of different options. Um, I also think that she was very much interested in continuing her uh, love of the theater, um, doing things in New York, museums, and so on. Actually, I can remember her coming home from one of the orientation um, visits the first week or two of Macaulay, and she said, Mom, the Brooklyn Museum, they closed it just for us, the whole museum. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, she was so impressed, you know. Um, so I just knew that she was going to get a good education. Um, I have to say that, you know, the idea of leaving college without being hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt was a major uh, draw. You know, I don't know if Cheka will go on to graduate school, but just the idea that she can leave college without being saddled by so much debt um, you know, was a consideration. But again, I left it up to her. You know, I, I said, you make the decision. And so uh, that's what she did. Um, one thing, one other thing that I was asked to talk about was, you know, whether I thought Checo was receiving um, good advising. And she is, she is very much so. I've been pulling back as a parent now that she's in college. Um, and she doesn't talk to me about a lot of things anyway, but one of the benefits of uh, working from home, both of us, is that I get to eavesdrop because she's usually in the room next to me and I can hear her talking to her classmates. I can hear her talking to her teachers. I can hear her talking to her advisors. Um, a lot of back and forth, um, a lot of laughter. Um, so I know that she's being looked after very well. Um, so all in all, I think it's been a great experience. She's finishing up her sophomore year and I hope the next two years go as well. Oh, I should also point out, we're from New York. We live 20 blocks away from City College, but um, we chose to have her live in the dorm for a variety of reasons. And um, you know, when the dorms closed because of COVID, she came back home. But one of the things I like about her dorm situation was that there was no cafeteria. So she was required to do her own cooking. They, each suite has its own kitchen. And um, I think that had a lot to do with her learning how to cook and learning how to budget. And so, you know, I, I think there are several ways that kids mature at Macaulay. And one of them is living in a dorm with no cafeteria. You can't sort of roll out of bed and be fed. You've got to think about planning. You've got to think about shopping and cooking and, and so on. So I, I give it two thumbs up. That's great, Allison. About the, the dorm situation that you were talking about before for Checo, pre-COVID, of course. So what, what about like, I would imagine having a, a dorm life like that, it would made it easier for her to kind of 
be really social with other people on her floor or other floors in her building? Well, you know, she applied to the dormitory um, room assignments late. So she would, did not end up on the Macaulay floor. And that was a bit of a disappointment. But she um, was with other students, other CUNY students. And um, initially there were some personality differences. And this is interesting. When she told me about it, I said, well, I've got to call the dorm. I've got to you know, see what's up. And the dorm director basically told me to mind my own business and let my daughter handle it. And you know, I, that's the way it should have been. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm glad that they are encouraging students to advocate for themselves, to work out their problems themselves. And um, yes, she did socialize. Um, when I was picking her up, um, you know, when COVID shut down the dorms, you know, just so many kids coming up and hugging and saying goodbye and, you know, see you soon, we hope and whatever. So I, I think she had a, a good time there. Uh, it sounds like she's had a great experience and hopefully we'll continue when she goes back to the dorm to have a great time with her friends. Um, thanks so much, Allison. Appreciate it. Um, our next speaker is Lorraine Chung N. Lorraine. Hi, uh, first congratulations to all the parents and the students who got accepted Macaulay. I know when Claire had heard that uh, she was accepted to Macaulay, it was like winning the lotto, like mega millions, and she was very excited. Um, we did hear about Macaulay in one of the college fairs up in the Northern Westchester college fairs. And, you know, listening to all the different colleges um, and pitching uh, what they had um, was interesting. But I think one of the interesting parts is none of the guidance counselors really knew about Macaulay Honors College. And um, they may have heard about the CUNY system, but um, as a, a CUNY graduate myself, I certainly would promote all the, uh, the wonderful education that you received. And my daughter went to Baruch. Um, she got accepted at quite a number of other colleges and received uh, very generous scholarships. She, she got accepted to George Washington, Northeastern, Ithaca, and a number of SUNY colleges. But in the end, it was her choice. As Alice said, I left the choice up to Claire uh, and she made the decision to go to Macaulay and Baruch. Um, she wanted to come out of graduate uh, college debt-free and we certainly are saving the money for her MBA. Um, Claire did graduate early. Um, she graduated in December, uh, is now uh, just got a job finally uh, with Penguin Books, Audio, Marketing. And I think that one of the things that offered um, through the Macaulay uh, is certainly the networking uh, aspect. Uh, networking with so many different organizations uh, and people. Um, and one of the reasons re why Claire picked um, Baruch and Macaulay was it was in the city and it offered so many different opportunities, uh, probably more so had she gone to Boston or Washington DC. Um, and she appreciated the diversity that the city had. She felt it would be more warming, uh, much more welcoming than if she went to school down in Washington in DC. Um, she got an internship every semester uh, she made connections with someone uh, through Macaulay and got her first internship at the American Ballet um, Theater um, and um, many, NBC. I mean, she just got some really um, hefty internships by living in the city. She did live in the dorm the first year uh, and then moved out after that. Um, she learned how to cook. Roommates knew, uh, learned how to cook. They learned how to clean. Um, they got an apartment uh, in the uh, Upper East Side uh, and she learned to negotiate on her own. Uh, the rent, the super, um, back and forth. And uh, she's really quite independent. Um, so I think that that was one of the, the great things about Macaulay. She loved the arts in New York um, piece. Um, one day she, she was calling me from the street. She was taking pictures on Broadway for one of the courses that she had to take a specific picture of a structure. And uh, she says, I'm standing in the middle of Broadway with the camera trying to take a picture of one of the statues. Um, and she was very impressed too when Brooklyn College had, uh, Brooklyn Museum had shut down for the whole uh, class. So she was very impressed with that. Um, so she loved it. I think she had a great experience. 
Great. And I can just say that, you know, Claire was actually one of the interns here at Macaulay. And so a number of us got to, to work with her and it was a pleasure to have her, you know, working with us and doing such a great job. So I'm so glad to hear that she's gotten a job. Congratulations to her. Really great news. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks so much, Lorraine. Uh, and then our final speaker is uh, Steve Borello. Steve. Hi, uh, congratulations to all the parents. I'm a little bit envious. I've been through this three times with my own kids, my wife and I, and uh, it goes by really quickly and it's an exciting time. And to go back to what Michael said, there's no place better in the country for your kids to go to school. Absolutely. This, every opportunity you can imagine is available through uh, Macaulay and through New York City resources. Um, when I first heard about this, so going back way back to like 2008, 2009, making the rounds with my oldest son, and he was looking at top schools, Ivy League schools, and at the time, engineering, looking at Cooper Union and Olin were still full scholarship schools. So uh, during, as, as was said before, during one of the college fairs, someone mentioned Macaulay. I had never heard of Macaulay, but we came to a Macaulay program, and it was a program where the students presented. And I have to tell you, you, you may have had this opportunity to see this also, but maybe not, unfortunately, with COVID over the last year. I have never ever seen presentations done so well before and so professional by the students. Uh, there were kids that were like sophomores already in operating rooms explaining their internship experiences. And, and one after the other were just as good as that. And it was just absolutely amazing. And so when we came out of this, my son still had a year before he had to really consider schools. He, he kind of said, my gosh, I want to go there. Uh, and there was no question, I wanted to go there. Uh, I myself am a career educator. I've, I was a teacher for 35 years and I've also taught at colleges. So I certainly have had experiences with schools and I had never seen anything at, at this level of presentation by the kids. So uh, academically, the students are as good as any place in the country, no question about that. When it comes to the experiences that the students had while they were there, my three kids had such incredible international experiences uh, and local experiences. My, my oldest, as I said, was engineering. He started out mechanical, became biomedical engineering. Uh, he actually used the Opportunities Fund to do a research project, which got him actually a job while he was still at school working with 3D printing, became very involved with 3D printing. Uh, wound up getting a job at Mount Sinai Hospital, which became his job when he graduated in biomedical engineering. And they actually have paid for his doctorate degree. He's just about finished his doctorate now. He hasn't spent a penny on education. Uh, again, thanks to Macaulay, all these opportunities came his way. Uh, my youngest son, who was just finished recently in chemical engineering, also was able to take advantage of different opportunities and spent uh, a summer in, at Purdue University in a very unique program with uh, solar energy. Uh, so he, he's had tremendous opportunities. My daughter, my gosh, my daughter's really the go-getter. She has uh, a, a way of getting things that she wants, even if it's not there initially and doing it using the, the system. Uh, one of the greatest things about Macaulay is the fact that you can create your own major. She had something that she really wanted to study that wasn't exactly fitting into the boxes. So she had a CUNY BA program that she studied and she went to several different schools, even though Baruch was her primary school and came out of this with a very unique degree that really got her exactly what she wanted. Uh, she had an opportunity to go to Cuba before Cuba was even opened up and was able to go there with a group from, from the Macaulay. Uh, and she had an experience where she was able to write enough to get recognized nationally and had some things published in USA Today because of her Cuba experience. Later on, she used the Opportunities Fund to study in Paris over the summer. Uh, and again, it was just an incredible situation that she had available to her. Uh, and again, the Opportunities Fund is something that is just so important for all kids. And to you know, please make sure we, we all do as much as possible to keep that going for the future. But each of my students had tremendous, my kids had tremendous opportunities, either international traveling or uh, traveling to Purdue or using the money for research for their own individual studies. The other thing that I thought was quite exciting for all of them is opportunities outside the classroom. Uh, as was already mentioned, there's so much that New York City has to offer, but maybe the most exciting thing is that if there is something that is not there already, and if there's enough interest, it can be created. My kids have all been really interested in music, very good musicians. And, and I know when my son was first there, they didn't have a jazz group. 
So he was really interested in starting a jazz group at the time. And one thing kind of led to another. He had enough people interested and they started what was known as the, the Macaulay Connections. And it's still around. Macaulay has been around with this jazz group ever since the time that my son was involved with doing that. And it was just so important. It's so important to see kids, the students interact outside the classroom as well as inside the classroom. And as was mentioned before, the diversity, uh, it's the, one of the best things about the whole program. There's such a, a true mixture of all people together working for a common cause and enjoying themselves. And it's, it's really what the world is supposed to be like. Macaulay is almost, uh, it's, it's such a perfect little microcosm of what can be and how you see it happening. And uh, all the parents I'm sure can express some of the same things that they've seen with their own children. So um, I know my son Joey has started that program going back to, it had to be probably around 2011 or 2012. Uh, at the time also, there were some kids who were interested in singing a cappella. There was no group doing that. And my son is not an a cappella singer, he's not a singer at all, but he's very good at arranging. So he wound up doing some arrangements and, and next thing you know, they started the triplets two groups that have been around ever since that time and are really doing very well ever since that time. My youngest son has continued with that activity. It was also part of the Macaulay Connections for the four years that he was there. I know they've played at the gala the last couple of years and anytime there's something special going on, he looks forward to, looks forward to participating in that. My daughter, again, my daughter had a different perspective on doing things and she's also a musician, but she was also very interested in Quidditch which I had never even heard of other than Harry Potter, but sure enough, there was the Quidditch team and a good one. And she got to compete on the World Quid Cup Quidditch tournament over a period of like three years in a row. They got to go to Florida, they got to go to North Carolina. I think that scared me more than anything because I'm watching her participate and, and it could be physical at times, not intentionally, but she had a phenomenal experience with the Quidditch as well as going to Cuba, going to Paris. Again, I, I can't say enough good things about the opportunities all three of them have had. And my daughter had internships with ABC News. Uh, first, she started local internship one semester, did extremely well, had an opportunity to internship with CBS the following semester, but instead chose to stay with ABC, went with the national news. Uh, she has, since she graduated, she has done so much work on her own uh, because she's become fairly well known. She's worked with a company called Quartz News. She's worked with a, company, a lot of things with New Yorker magazine. She had something published recently, I, and I'll read the title. It's called The Mysteries and Motives of Pandemic Dreams, uh, something that was published by New Yorker magazine, and there was a little video that went along with it. She's, I guess, technically right now, she's between associate producer, executive producer, depending on what she's working on. Uh, my oldest son, as I said, is finishing his doctorate with uh, Mount Sinai. My youngest son, graduated in chemical engineering. Uh, he is going over to the University of California at Berkeley on a full scholarship for his PhD program, which kind of gives my wife and I a place to go in the cold weather, but it's, so it's kind of mixed feelings. We're certainly gonna be missing him, but happy that he's where he wants to be. Uh, and again, this all happened because of the opportunities that Macaulay brought to the table for the kids, all kids, from my, my, my children, my wife's children and I, and uh, I, I just can't say enough good things. I mean, it, it, again, as someone who's been in education and has seen this happen, it's, it's almost like the perfect situation that you wanna keep duplicating for others and say, this is how it should be. Uh, so I, I just can't say enough good things about you know, what your children have in store for them if they yet say yes to Macaulay and what you have also as parents sharing this opportunity with other parents, uh, it's just, uh, I, I say thank you all the time, and I really am very appreciative and uh, looking forward to uh, what the future holds for the future generations that keep going to Macaulay. And I'm so glad that we had lucked out by meeting someone who told us that. Otherwise, I never would have known. It's no longer the best kept secret, that's for sure. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. I mean, here you have three kids who attended two of our schools, and it seems like They've had such different diverse experiences yeah. and they've each found what really resonates with them in terms of a future career path. Absolutely have, yes. That's great, wonderful, wonderful. Well, you've heard our parents' stories. And so uh, thanks everybody for sharing them, just really great stuff. And now we'd like to open the floor for questions. And so parent audience, if you would like to send us some questions, we'd be very, very happy to answer them. Please just 
type them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and, screen and we'll be happy to answer them. Okay, here's one that's appeared here. Okay, and this, uh, we're going to like throw this out to the, to the group. So whoever wants to answer this. Uh, and the question is, uh, did any of your children play a sport while at Macaulay and what was their experience? My son will be attending Macaulay at Hunter and playing soccer for Hunter as well. Well, you mentioned Quidditch, Steve, so. Right, that, that's, my daughter played Quidditch. Uh, my, my sons did not, but she certainly was involved with Quidditch. As I said, it got her not only local involvement, but national involvement. Great, anyone else? Okay. I can, I can tell you that from my, uh, my daughter's experience, she didn't play basketball, that's for sure. But um, the colleges have, uh, you, you know, soccer tends to be a very um, engaging sport on the campuses. And I, I think you can also see a lot of students uh, involved in uh, baseball in the season. Uh, these are um, some, some, of the, some of the basketball teams, of course, are available. Uh, and they play uh, both within CUNY and outside of the CUNY system. They play uh, colleges and they travel. So you do have a mix. The tennis, uh, many of the colleges have uh, tennis sports as well. It's a variety of things. Great, thanks. And my daughter participated in competitive swimming. Great, terrific, yeah. wonderful. Anyone else? Okay, the next question is, can you take classes at more than one campus through Macaulay? Anyone want to and jump unless in? Unless anything has changed, that's always been the case. And my daughter certainly did that. She took her, most of her courses through Baruch. Uh, and she also took some courses through, uh, I'm trying to remember the other schools. I think she went to Lehman for some courses. She went to Brooklyn for some courses. Uh, she really had the opportunity to go wherever that particular unique course was being offered and apply it to her major. Great, thank you. Yes, I was going to say my, my thing that my son took classes at Baruch, even though he was at Hunter College. Uh, so you can take classes in other um, schools as well which is something unique in, with the CUNY system, right? Even though you're in Macaulay and in one college, you can use or go to other uh, schools that offers whatever you need or you would like to take. Right, and there are over like 475 majors to choose from like throughout the university. So yeah, it's, it's a place where students can really kind of broaden their uh, exposure to all different kinds of things by attending different courses and different classes at different colleges, so yeah. And another question is, and this is probably for me, is, is there a parent support group? And uh, actually there is everybody. Um, besides raising money for the college, I'm also the liaison uh, for parents here at Macaulay. And I get to work with a terrific uh, parents group, a leadership parents group, uh, the Parents Council. And everyone who's here on our panel are members of the Parents Council and uh, wanna thank them so much for their generosity and support of everything that we do here. And it's a group that does meet a few times during the year. We have various committees and we wanna get people like involved with the life of, life of the school. And so besides financial support, they're very active volunteers and we do things to really help our students, which is really our focus all the time. So yes, there is. And, and certainly if you do decide to enroll at Macaulay, we certainly hope you'd become members of our parents council. So, yeah. I would like to add also before COVID, I don't know now with COVID, but there was also events for parents that I really enjoyed a lot. They brought like uh, people to talk to us. They have different uh, programs or events. I, I really enjoyed those events very much. And it was, they were just for parents. Right, and we hope you'll come back once we're able to hold these, 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 uh, these uh, events in person. Right now, we're trying to do a lot of events for parents and everyone else like, via Zoom. So hopefully you'll stay tuned and come to those as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions here? Okay. Oh, oh I have one. Okay, here's, I'm just again gonna throw this out to everybody. Um, distance learning has become the new norm since the pandemic. 
but was it difficult for your students to adapt to working remotely? Anyone See, want to I, can, I can answer just from my perspective. There seems to be a lot of group activity going on, even with the distance learning. Again, I hear my daughter talking to classmates all the time, working on various projects. So, you know, as, as different as things are these days, I think the college is still making an effort to get people in touch or keep students in touch. Great. Um, another question we have here is, can anyone speak about the pros and cons of taking advantage of the dorms freshman year versus living at home or renting an apartment for Macaulay Honors City College? I could take that one. Um, there's, it depends on, on your student. Um, you know, there's pros and cons of living in a dorm. Uh, the dorm uh, can be a little bit more noisy. I will have to say that she lived in the dorm up on 90 something street. Uh, that was both for Baruch and Hunter. And the security there was very, very good. Um, they had 24 hour around the clock guards letting the students in and you can have a guest, uh, but they were very good. Um, it's a little bit noisy, of course, in the dorm. Um, and it depends on how close you want to be to campus. Um, so later on, and also it, there is there were kitchens in the dorm that she was able to cook in. But she found the freedom of renting an apartment a little bit better. Um, she found an apartment that was closer to the subway, was easier to get to. Um, so it's really an individual um, choice. Um, and I think that living away from home increases the independence for your child um, and um, gives them that kind of develops that uh, independence that they should have at that age, I think anyway. And Claire, I think really appreciated. She really grew. And each of my three started out in a dorm uh, and very similar story for my two youngest, after the first year, they wound up finding their own uh, places that were more, a little more convenient and worked out. Uh, in terms of my oldest son, actually, he dormed at the towers and wound up becoming an RA. So, uh, you know, there he had opportunities that he enjoyed there also. Okay, I think we have time for maybe one more question, and. One question that's come in is that um, I hear that Macaulay's Honors Program has a commitment to personalized advisement. How did your student's advisor help in navigating academic coursework and preparing for a future career? Jump this in anyway. Yeah, I, I'll just briefly say this is like having a big fat beach ball thrown right over the heart of the plate because Michaela had the, of course, the combination of the Macaulay and the Hunters uh, advisors, um, but uh, she spent a, a lot of time taking advantage of, uh, of the advice and the advice was um, at Hunter in particular was very, very, uh, very helpful academic advice, which, uh, uh, you know, and just being able to walk in uh, and, and sit down and, and ask questions. Uh, she's still getting advice. <laughs> She's out for a year now and uh, she speaks to her advisor quite frequently. It's a very special place, a uh, very uh, welcoming and uh, warm place that, that the environment that was created at Hunter for them. And um, so I, I was just, I mean, that to me was just a, a blessing, just a blessing. Actually, I just wanted to say a brief uh, funny story. At the beginning of uh, sophomore year, Jekka was choosing her classes and she says, I think I'm gonna take um, biochemistry and physics and philosophy. What do you think? Now, my first reaction is you've gotta be kidding. I mean, there's no way you could take those, that, that heavy a load. But again, I was able to say, why don't you ask your advisor? And fortunately, the advisor steered her into a course load that I thought was a lot more manageable. 
So I, I didn't have to be the heavy. I think that might be a good answer for- uh, Also uh, with the advisor. <laughs> I wanted to add also with the internships, I think that the advisors, both of them, Macaulay and, and the one in Hunter, help him get in internships that will help him with his postgrad stu studies. Uh, at the beginning, I, I, I told him I can help you get in an internship in this area. He was not mom because that's not gonna help me with my master degree or my PhD. And he was very focused on what he wanted. He's very organized. And, and the advisors help him uh, going through, this is what is gonna help you. This internship is gonna help you getting this other one for next year and so on until he, when he applied for his master's degree at Columbia University and they look what he had done. One of the things that they told him in the interview is that he already has a lot of experience in research more than so other students that were applying. So that really helped him in his application for the postgrad. Great. Thank you very much. Well, everybody, uh, I think that does it for our program. We've reached uh, six o'clock and I'd like to thank our speakers for being with us tonight and for sharing their thoughts on Macaulay. And also many thanks to my colleagues and external relations team and to you, our audience, you know, for joining us. So good luck in making your decision. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my contact information will be posted on screen uh, once we close. So thanks again, good night.